or no, wait, turn the page and see what kind of what page you're on. Oh, yes, autonomic dysreflexia. I want to go in order. Autonomic dysreflexia. Look at the box on the left and highlight, I hope it says basal, it should say basal dilation. Highlight it. The box on the right should say basal constriction. Highlight it. This patient has an injury of T6 and higher. Highlight that at the top. So let me ask you real quick. Is T2 at risk? Yes or no? Yes, yes because it's higher than T6. Don't be goofy talking about no, because the number is, is actually lower, but the site is actually higher. So again, I'm going to say that again because I need you to know that. I just asked about, is the patient with a T2 injury at risk for autonomic dysreflexia? And you so eloquently stated, yes. Very nice. Because T2 is higher in the scheme of things. So what do we do? T is thoracic, and this is how we numbered, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Because we say cervical, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Cervical, there's 8. It's like breakfast is at 8. What's the next meal? Lunch. Lunch is at noon. There's 12 of the thoracic. This is T6. So all quadriplegics are at risk. All quadriplegics are at risk. Now, when it comes to this patient with this hot mess of uh, autonomic dysreflexia, every spinal cord injury patient is at risk big time. And there are three, well, no, four. No, I don't know. Three, we'll start with three. Three triggers. They all start with a P. P, poop, it is for. P, poop, pain, and pressure. I'm going to say those again. P, poop, pain, and pressure. The pressure for this patient is going to be sitting in the same position too long. The number one trigger is a kinked foley or a bowel impaction. The patient that has a bowel impaction, let's make sure we're clear. Pain, poop, pain, pressure. Pressure is sitting in the same spot too long, tight clothes, tight clothes. Pain is pressure ulcer, open, it hurts, but they can't tell. Because remember, they can't tell and nothing hurts. They can't tell the pressure, they can't tell none of this. Pee and poop is kink foley. And I think there's a kink foley on your picture or something. Full bladder, I guess. Um, and then uh, fecal impaction is on your sheet too. Okay, now here's what's going to happen. Your patient. I'll just give you mine because it's the best example I could give you and it'll make sense you'll remember it better on your test. Uh, we had a home care patient that had a spinal cord injury, sent the, um, the nurse was going out there to see about her. Uh, the aide never bothered to show up, nor did she call us to tell us she wasn't coming. So what happened? The patient with this spinal cord injury had had an ileo conduit. Do you know anything about that? That's to catch urine. So the patient had an ileo conduit bag to catch the damn urine. The aide never showed up to empty the bag. The uh, nurse got out of her car in the driveway. She could hear the patient saying, Chanel, she knows her nurse, Chanel, hurry, hurry. When she got to the patient, the patient was bright red. That's called flush. It's already on your sheet. Highlighted. Patient's bright red, they're flush. The patient was sweating profusely. Is that on there? Okay, highlight it. Patient had a severe headache. The bag wasn't empty. She's a quadriplegic. She's like, the bag, 
Our patients know, spinal cord patients know, the bag, Chanel, the bag, you know, she's telling her, get the bag. She said she'll go ahead and empty the bag. However, she took her vital signs, her blood pressure's through the roof. That should be on there. So you see it, her blood pressure, okay, her blood pressure's through the roof. All right, now, her first nursing action, if it hadn't already been done, because the patient was in a wheelchair from her son stopping by and getting her in the chair, her first nursing action would be to sit the patient straight up in a 90 degree angle. First nursing action, sit the patient straight up. Second nursing action is to try to fix the cause and loosen tight clothing. Because you don't always know the cause, nor does the patient. But if you can figure it out, it's good, okay? So sit the patient straight up, Loosen any tight clothing, because maybe that's the cause. Figure out what the cause is. Treat the cause, okay? Then, of course, this blood pressure. You're going to put pocardia slash nifedipine. That's what that is. Pocardia is nifedipine. It comes sublingual for this patient. They usually have it at their house, because this is a risk. They usually have this drug at their house. Sublingual. Nephetipine, because can you start an IV or home care nurse? No, nah, you don't, you're not, what, no. So you're gonna put the sublingual, pocardia, and then of course you're just gonna call 911, which is what I advised her to do, okay? Uh, this patient's at risk for a stroke. This patient's at risk for a stroke. The pressure is so high, the patient is at risk for a stroke. Okay, moving on to, let's see, next page, what do you got? What y'all got? Nothing? Mm, I wouldn't say nothing, keep going. Yeah, that's it right there. Spinal cord, it says, what does it say, spinal cord injury? Okay, what I want you to write on that one is this. Upper motor neuron versus lower motor neuron. Um, so here we go, babies. For this one, for upper motor neuron, I want you to say to yourself, upper, that's up here. That means the reflexes are high. Okay, so brisk reflexes. Upper motor neuron, brisk reflexes. What's an example? Cerebral palsy, which is real <laughs> reflexic, and positive Babinski, that's hyperreflexia. So positive Babinski. Now, the opposite, lower motor neuron. Lower motor neuron. This is absent reflexes. This is your patient who's in neurogenic shock. Okay, so paralysis or whatever. And those reflexes are diminished or even absent. Diminished or absent. So far, so good? Okay. Uh, let's see. I wanted to give you the... Oh, polio. Let's see. Bell's palsy for, for your lower motor neuron. Uh, Bell's palsy. Polio. <coughs> ALS. MS is hyperreflexia. Yeah. Yeah. MR, uh, MS is hyperreflexia. So let's make sure we got our list right. Hyperreflexic, positive Babinski, cerebral palsy, MS, 
hyporeflexia, Bell's palsy, flaccid patients with the neural with the um, spinal shock, polio, and ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. What's the other name for ALS? Lou Gehrig's. Good. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Now, you have your other packet. Go take a pee-pee break. Come right back.